Peter Matthews is a professor of political science at Cypress College, and he joins us now from Long Beach, California, to put this latest shakeup into perspective. Peter, just a little FYI, I, uh, my alma mater is not too far from where you are, Cal State Fullerton, so good to have a fellow oh, yeah. Californian with us. Hey. So let's get into it. Bannon told the Weekly Standard that the Trump presidency that we fought for and won is over. He said we still have a huge movement and we'll, we, we will make something of this Trump presidency, but that presidency is over. What's your take on that? My take was that's a reflection of the strain between the right wing populists like Bannon uh, within the administration and also, on the other hand, the traditional Republicans or more corporatists who want the traditional free trade uh, actions with other parts of the world. For example, on China, uh, Bannon was strictly against saying that China has to be brought under control, that the free trade was not uh, working, that we need a, more of a balanced trade. He never talked about higher wages in China that would allow Chinese workers to buy the American products. He just thought that we were selling too many, uh, we were buying too many products from China compared to what we were selling. So he wanted more protectionism. The corporatist Republicans and corporate Democrats want to have more free trade with, with, with less regulations. So there's a big conflict there on a very important issue of trade. There was also North Korea, where Bannon uh, contradicted the president right head on by saying that North Korea cannot be solved through military means and uh, that we have to, in other words, he was going, the president wanted to use uh, possibly a military action in order to solve the problem. And Bannon went up against a very high profile issue of foreign policy. This couldn't keep going. And I'm sure General Kelly, or Chief of Staff Kelly, had something to do with, with getting rid of Bannon in the end. But Bannon's going to fight from the outside. He's going to try to push that agenda of right wing populism from Breitbart News and speaking out uh, from the outside. And you just made the perfect segue into my next question, which is the fact that, you know, sources close to Bannon are quoted as saying that Bannon is, quote unquote, going nuclear, that he's now fully unchained. Of course, as you mentioned, he's back as executive chairman of Breitbart. He said he's going to go for war with Trump. So what's Bannon likely to do with that specific role? How is he going to use this platform to help the Trump presidency? He'll start out with uh, completely contradicting and vilifying and putting down the more establishment Republicans that are in the Trump administration and try to show that, in his view, that President Trump really wants to be more of a right-wing populist, but that he can't, his hands are tied, and Bannon's going to help liberate him from the outside by keeping sure that Trump's uh, right-wing support among these, not just the alt-right, which is a very significant part of, of Trump's support, the, the white nationalists, but also some of the other folks who had lost jobs, who'd actually voted for Barack, Barack Obama twice, for example, in Macomb County, Michigan, which gave Michigan's electoral votes to Trump, because those folks, working class, white Reagan Democrats, blue collar workers, lost jobs under two Democratic uh, administrations, the four years each of Obama, and they voted against uh, Hillary and for Trump because of that. And I'm sure that Bannon is going to use those folks to generate more uh, enthusiasm for the right-wing populism and protectionist agenda. None Peter, of this stuff is going to really solve quick before we have to, Peter, really quick before yeah. we have to cut to the break, I just wanted to ask you sure. a quick follow-up to that, which is Bannon was brought into the White House to fight the establishment. That was one of the roles that he was given that Trump had agreed to. Do you think he's going to be more successful in the chief executive at Breitbart in, in accomplishing that? No, because I think that the Breitbart people and the right-wing populists are much, very much of a minority in America. Only 33 percent or 34 percent of American voters even approve of President Trump right now. And a fraction of those people are right-wing populists, such as Bannon. He'll be successful in his own way for himself and for his, his news uh, operation of Breitbart, but not for the, uh, the Trump administration's agenda or for America. That's the problem. The president has to expand his base and become more inclusive. And Bannon will not help him do that. Peter Matthews, great to have you with us.